Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time we're going to take a look at Debian 13, which has just been released. Debian is an important Linux distro because, in addition to being a popular operating system in its own right, it's also the foundation for many other distros, including Ubuntu. The release of a new version of Debian is therefore an important event for the Linux community. So, let's go and take a closer look. Right, for me it's now 13 minutes past 8 on Saturday the 9th of August 2025 and Debian 13 has just been released. Indeed, if we go across to the Debian website at debian.org and we scroll down, we find that here we are, project news, Debian 13 Trixie has been released, with various features which we'll talk about later in the video. As always, a lot of different images are available for free download, and these allow Debian 13 to be tested and installed with a variety of desktop environments, and on computers with an x86, ARM, and various other kinds of processors, including now officially RISC-V. However, do note that Debian 13 does not support 32-bit CPUs. In addition, there are also Debian 13 images available for various cloud platforms, including AWS. However, here, at least initially, we're going to make things nice and simple and take the default download from the main page. There it is. I'll save it in a prepared Debian folder like that. There we go. And this will allow us to install Debian on a standard 64-bit x86 PC with an internet connection. So, let's speed on through until our download completes. There we go, we've downloaded our ISO file, which we now need to write to a bootable USB drive. And I've already inserted the USB drive into our computer, and we're going to write the image to it using Rufus, which as you can see, I'm already running. So, let's select our ISO. There it is, like that. So, let's now click on Start and we'll take the recommended option of writing ISO image mode like that. And it seems we need some additional files, so we'll let those be downloaded. And then we'll click on OK. I always like to show you things warts and all in these review videos, and that's exactly what you're getting here. And do note, as always, that writing an ISO image to a USB drive will delete everything from the USB drive. Oh look, we've relocated to a very badly lit coal mine. But do not fear if I press this button down here, our PC will boot. It'll boot from our Debian 13 USB install media. It's got to because the only other drive on this test system is a blank SSD. And as you can see, we've got a range of options. Graphical install, which is what we're going to use, but there's also an install with speech synthesis. I do like the sound of that. But uh, anyway, for now, we will stick with graphical install. Here we go. So let's first select our language. I'll stick with English. And my location is going to be United Kingdom. And my keyboard, British English. And it's now detecting hardware and sorting itself out. And we now need to enter a host name. I'll stick with the default of Debian. And it also wants a domain name. This really doesn't matter on a home system. So I'll just put test.com. I think that'll keep it happy and continue. And it now wants us to set up users and passwords. And the first user here is the root user. And I'm not going to enter a root password because as it tells us here in the third paragraph, what this will do is to lock the root account and enable the first user account on the system to enter root or admin commands using the sudo command. So I'll just click on continue and I now have to set up that first user account. I'll give it a full name of a EC for which it suggests quite reasonably a username of lowercase EC. And I now have to enter a password. There we go. And it's now noticed that on this system, I sometimes boot operating systems not in UEFI mode, even though those drives are not currently connected. So I'm not going to force a UEFI installation. I'll leave this on no. You probably won't see this screen, but if you do, well, no is probably the safe option. 
Next, we have to select how our disk is going to be used. Here I'm going to use the entire SSD connected to the system for installing Debian, so I'll stick with guided use entire disk. And then here we need to make sure we're selecting the right drive to use. It is this Samsung SSD. Below it is the USB drive we're running the installer from. So we will stay with Samsung and click on continue. And then on this screen, we'll keep all files in one partition. And there we are. We've now got a summary. Everything looks OK. So once again, we will click, guess what, continue. Oh, and it wants us to confirm again. We will again click on yes. And for a third time here, continue. And uh, there we are, things are now happening, so we will use the magic of filmmaking to speed on through as it installs the base system. And now we need to configure our package manager, the software which allows us to install other software on the system. We basically have to say where a package is going to come from. We will pick the United Kingdom. And then here we will use deb.debian.org, the default for the archive mirror. Next, I don't need to enter an HTTP proxy, so I'll just click on continue. Next, I love the wording here. Do we want to take part in the popularity contest? Or in other words, do we want to send statistics back to the developers? I'm happy to do that for Debian, so I'll click on yes and continue. And we now get to the point where we can choose our desktop environment. And here, I'm going to stay with the default. We are going to have a desktop environment. It is going to be the default for Debian 13, which is GNOME. And we're going to have the standard system utilities installed. So once again, we'll click on the magic continue. And the installer will get on retrieving files and then installing them, because that is what installers do. And there we are, installation is complete. So it's now time to reboot. We'll press continue and remove the USB drive from the system like that. And with a fair wind, we'll now boot into Debian 13. And we've arrived. Let's select our user and enter my password. And oh look, we're being welcomed. And I don't think I'm going to take the tour. We will skip. We will obviously look at things later in the video. And here we are. I was expecting a first run wizard. We don't have a first run wizard, but uh, I'm sure that's fine. And so what I'm now going to do is to make a few scaling changes so things read better on video. And I'll come back to you after that. Right. Here I am back again with things optimized to my liking. So let's run through some key features. For a start, Debian 13 is based on Linux kernel 6.12 compared to 6.1 for Debian 12. Under the hood, a lot of other software components have also been upgraded, improving security and other things that won't be immediately apparent to the average desktop user. Debian 13 has full support until August the 9th, 2028, followed by two years of long-term support until June the 30th, 2030. The default GNOME desktop that we're running here is now version 48 and provides a pretty minimalistic graphical interface, as we can see. We have a top panel with controls on the right, but we don't have an applications menu or even an on-screen dock or applications icon like we find in Ubuntu. Rather, to access applications, we can press the Super or Windows key like this, which brings up a dock to which some applications are pinned. Or if I just close the dock by clicking the desktop, we can also bring up the dock by clicking top left and then to access all applications going all the way down here to click on show apps. And I've always found this a very strange piece of user interface design to have to click all the way up here and come all the way down there to access applications. And I'm sure some people are saying in the comments, well, they expect you to use the keyboard. Well, if they expect you to use the keyboard, why provide an icon in the first place? Anyway, everything here does look rather nice, particularly with the settings I've chosen. And specifically what I've done is to go into System, where we find pre-installed tweaks, which has got a fonts option where you can change certain fonts, which is exactly what I've done. Also here in Tweaks, there is a Windows option, where if we want, we can turn on Maximize and Minimize buttons for Windows, which, if you're used to using Microsoft's operating system, is kind of fundamental. 
In terms of included applications, we just go back to the applications like that. I'll use the keyboard and uh, there we are. A standard Debian 13 install includes the extended support release of Firefox along with LibreOffice 25. There it is. And a new music app called Music, which replaces the previous application called Rhythmbox. And we also find in Utilities the new default GNOME image viewer. However, Solitaire is no longer pre-installed by default as it was in Debian 12. But fear not to install Solitaire or any other application, we can just go to the Software Manager, where according to Debian, over 14,100 new packages have been made available, which brings the overall total to 69,830. The Software Manager works just fine, although I wish it had a few more categories. For example, we've got a Create category here, which has got lots of stuff in, but in other distros, this will be split down into things like video and audio and graphics and things like that. And some of the work category here just contains loads of productivity applications, which again is great, but it would be useful to have these categorized into, well, into categories. And so what we basically have here in the software installer is a tool for searching for applications. So let's use it. Let's search, for example, for GIMP, the GNU image manipulation program. There it is. And if we wanted to install this, all we've got to do is to click on install and then enter our password. There we go. We don't have to use the terminal to install applications as many Linux naysayers continue to claim. And we could now run GIMP directly using the open button here, but I like to check it's installed. So let's just go back to all applications over there. And there it is. We can run up GIMP. We've installed it on the system very easily indeed. And a yes, it is a there, it is working, seems to be okay. This is not a video about GIMP, so we will close this down and move on to something else. And that something else is taking a look in settings up here. Let's go to uh, settings like that. Well, we'll just take a look at the system. We'll click on about. And if we go down to system details, we can see what we're running, which is most definitely Debian 13, which is codenamed Trixie after the Triceratops in the Toy Story movies. And as we can see, we're definitely running GNOME 48. We've got Wayland as our windowing system. Well, we can't have everything. And we're definitely running Linux kernel 612.38. However, the really exciting thing I want to show you here in settings is the new Wellbeing tab introduced in GNOME 48. And what this allows us to do is to monitor our screen time on a daily and a weekly basis. And also if we want to set limits. So if we want to, we can turn this on, set a limit of how many hours we think we should be using on the computer, and we can set things up so the screen turns to grayscale if we go beyond our set limit. We can also set reminders to take breaks to protect our eyesight and also to move around. And we can set a break schedule, as you can see down there. And we can also set the system to play a sound when our break is complete. If you're like me, you probably want to know what happens when we use this. And so earlier, in the name of science, I set out playing Google's browser-based version of Solitaire. And after 20 minutes, a message appeared for an eyesight break, instructing me to look at least six meters away for a curtailed period of time. And then the screen dimmed for a movement break, which was timed with a countdown clock. And once this descended to zero, a friendly chime went bing to tell me to get back to business. And so I returned to Solitaire Hyper Refreshed, which allowed me to immediately win the game. <laughs> Greetings. I thought I'd now show you Debian 13 running with the KDE Plasma desktop environment, and here it is. Specifically, Debian 13 ships with KDE Plasma 6.3, which is a beautiful desktop with by default a bottom panel and a left-hand menu with applications grouped into categories, as we can see. And down here in settings, everything is beautifully configurable to exact user requirement. To get Debian 13 with the KDE Plasma desktop, one option is to install from a default image that we used earlier in the video and to select KDE rather than GNOME when prompted to choose your desktop environment. However, what I did here is to go to debian.org and on the home page to scroll down. So I didn't use the standard download, I used other downloads. 
and then over here under Try Debian Live before installing, I click to download the live KDE image. And when this is written to a USB drive and booted up, it provides the opportunity to test things out before an install. And if you do want to install, you can run up the Calamari's installer included on the desktop, rather than using the standard installer included with the default Debian download. As we can see, this is a much more pleasant experience. Let's just run through it quickly. We will pick United Kingdom as my language. We have to pick my time zone. There we are graphically. And then we now select the keyboard. We can select the option to erase disk and install Debian. We then have to set up a user account. And finally, click on install which, as I'm sure you would agree, is much more straightforward than using the standard Debian installer. Back in the final install, the included applications are very similar to those we found in Debian 13 with its default GNOME desktop, with one exception. And that exception is this, an application called Conqueror, which is both a web browser and a file manager. Although, if you don't want to use this, do not despair. We have the standard Dolphin file manager included, as we can see here. And if we go to the menu and we go to Internet, oh look, we have got Firefox. Let's pin that to the taskbar, shall we? Do it uh, like that. There we are, get rid of that. And we can now run up Firefox in the normal manner. And oh look, we're visiting explainingcomputers.com. Debian 13 is a solid, reliable Linux distro, which, in my view, is excellent when paired with the KDE Plasma desktop environment. And so, you may ask, why would anybody choose a distro based on Debian, like Ubuntu, rather than Debian itself? And the answer lies in the ease of installation of some closed source software. For example, if your computer has got an NVIDIA graphics card and you want to install the official NVIDIA driver, then in Ubuntu or Linux Mint, you can do this in a few clicks in a graphical driver manager. And indeed, in Zorin OS, you can select the NVIDIA option in the boot menu and everything will be automatically set up. But still, today, in Debian 13, if you want to install the official closed source NVIDIA driver, you have to open a terminal and execute terminal commands. And this is why, for some people, a distro based on Debian is still a better choice than Debian itself. But now, that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe and I hope to talk to you again very soon.